I'm gonna figure out a connection between each one of them. Are you gonna take them somewhere? No, I'm gonna do a video with them. Hello everyone. So today I'm going to do one of those uh, thread responses. I don't really do much of those anymore these days. Uh, it's the 20 album connection, connecting 20 albums. Someone's done this before. I don't remember who originally did it, but I know I've seen it done before. But this one was started by uh, Dylan at Noble Records. I've seen four or five responses, and I thought I would just give it a try with a little bit of a spin. If you saw the beginning, uh, you saw my son Sam uh, pulling records off the shelf. So I just had him randomly pull records and then I would try and figure out a way to connect all 20 of them. I was doing it in an effort to, to show how easy it is to connect 20 records in your collection. I still maintain that it's very easy to do that. Uh, it, it was actually a lot harder than I thought <laughs> with with 20 random ones that you have no control over. And you'll see what I mean, because some of these connections are quite loose. I don't know, I'll let you be the judge. Uh, so we're gonna start with, I did have to use the internet by the way. It was, there was just no way. Stay Positive by The Hold Steady, uh, their album from 2008. Um, the story about The Hold Steady is that uh, Craig Finn and Tad Kubler were watching the concert film, The Last Waltz by the band. And this was after uh, they had their band Lifter Puller had broken up. And they said, why aren't there any bands like that anymore? So uh, that was the inspiration for starting the whole study. Not that they sound like the band or anything, but they do have a lot of kind of rootsy classic rock vibes. So yeah, so the whole study were inspired by the band of all people. The band had an album, uh, their first album was called Music from Big Pink, and on that album there's a song called In a Station, uh, which was covered by Karen Dalton on her album In My Own Time from 1971. This album uh, on the song, what is it? Which song is it? In My Own Dream features a solo by guitarist John Hall from the band Orleans. John Hall co-wrote a song called Half Moon, which is on Janis Joplin's album Pearl, which also has her biggest hit, Me and Bobby McGee, which was written by Chris Christopherson and covered by <laughs> Waylon Jennings on his 1973 album Lonesome, Ornery, and Mean. Uh, this album also features a song called San Francisco Mabel Joy, which is about a uh, Waycross, Georgia boy who moves to California and falls in love with a prostitute. Uh, San Francisco was a hotbed for psychedelic rock in the 60s. And one of the bands, one of the many bands that was based out of San Francisco in uh, those days was the other half. Randy Holden was a member of the other half. Sticking with San Francisco, though. <laughs> when I think of San Francisco psychedelic bands, I think of uh, The Grateful Dead. Here's Working Man's Dead from 1970. A lot of Jerry Garcia's songs were co-written with lyricist Robert Hunter. And Robert Hunter, believe it or not, actually collaborated with and I had no idea about this till I researched it. Um, Elvis Costello on a song. Uh, now the song escapes my memory, the title of it. It was an unreleased song. So this was a deep, deep dive connection. <laughs> but they did work together. This is this year's model by Elvis Costello, which does not have a song. This album artwork was designed by Barney Bubbles, um, who also designed several albums for the band Hawkwind, including this album, Hall of the Mountain Grill from 1974. Hall of the Mountain Grill was recorded at Olympic Studios in London, England. 
So were parts of this album by Peter Gabriel. Peter Gabriel's first solo album, self-titled from 1977. This album has uh, Larry Fast on it, Synthesizer Genius. He plays uh, the Mini Moog on this. The Mini Moog would uh, eventually, that was an early version of the Mini Moog, it would evolve over time and it would become the Mini Moog Voyager, which was played by um, Sonic Boom on this album, Panda Bear versus the Grim Reaper. Sonic Boom appears as a guest and he plays an array of synthesizers, um, but Mini Moog Voyager is one of them. This is where the connections get really loose, guys, <laughs> if they haven't been already. Um, Panda Bear actually sampled the song Cupid, not on this record, but on an EP of his from like 2004. I can't remember the name of the song, but he sampled Cupid by Sam Cooke. When you're struggling for uh, connections from albums from the 60s, uh, the best way to go is just uh, think of somebody from the Wrecking Crew. Um, Hal Blaine played drums on Another Saturday Night. Hal Blaine also played drums on this album, Pacific Ocean Blue by Dennis Wilson from 1977. We're going to stick with Hal Blaine because Hal Blaine, as a member of the Wrecking Crew, worked very often with Phil Spector, who produced this album, All Things Must Pass by George Harrison. We haven't seen enough of this record uh, in recent times in BC videos, have we? One of the many contributors uh, as backing musicians on this album was the band Badfinger and Badfinger's second album was produced by Tony Visconti. Tony Visconti works as a producer and a musician on this album Black Star by David Bowie. Now <laughs> stay with me. David Bowie's song Modern Love from his album Let's Dance was featured in a scene, um, I wouldn't say iconic because it's not necessarily an iconic film, but it's one of the uh, more memorable scenes from the movie Francis Ha, which starred Greta Gerwig and uh, was directed by her husband, uh, I believe her husband, at least boyfriend, Noah Baumbach. Noah Baumbach directed another film in the late 90s called Mr. Jealousy, which starred Eric Stoltz. And the person that created the score for that album was Sean Eden from the band Luna. This is Luna's 1994 album, Bewitched, uh, which features a guest appearance by uh, Grasshopper. I don't know if, uh, Grasshopper, who was in the band Mercury Rev. One of the other members of that band goes by the name of Dave Fridman. And Dave Fridman is quite a sought after producer these days. He produced an album for the band Elf Power, which is uh, associated with part of the Elephant Six Collective. Uh, so is this band, Great Lakes. <laughs> They're part of the second wave of the Elephant Six Collective. This is their self-titled debut from 2000. Great Lakes is from the city of, the town of, college town of, Athens, Georgia. And when I think of Athens, Georgia, I think of one band. There are many, but the first band that comes to mind, probably to everyone, is R.E.M. R.E.M.'s legendary guitarist, Peter Buck, produced March 16th through 20th, 1992 by Uncle Tupelo. This is a twofer album, which features that album and also the previous album, Still Feel Gone. One of the founding members of Uncle Tupelo is... Jeff Tweedy. This is, believe it or not, another twofer album. This is uh, a compilation of his albums Warm and Warmer. Warm features contributions from his Wilco bandmate uh, Glenn Kochi on percussion. And Glenn Kochi also played percussion on this album, Ones and Sixes by Low. Low is uh, one of my favorite bands, uh, first of all, but also uh, at members Alan Sparhawk and Mimi Parker. Rest in peace, Mimi Parker. We lost her in November of last year. Uh, they were a married couple. Another married couple that works together in a band, 
Carrie Ann Hurst and Michael Trent are Shovels and Rope, based out of Charleston, South Carolina. The leadoff track is an outstanding song called Birmingham. And this album by Dale Watson and his Lone Stars, this is a live record. It features a song that also has Birmingham in the title <laughs> called Birmingham Breakdown. And this album was released by Red House Records, which is actually based in St. Paul, Minnesota. Sorry. <laughs> which is one of the Twin Cities, which is brings us all the way back to the whole study because Lifter Puller, uh, the pre their previous band, Craig Finn and Ted Kubler were in, was based out of uh, the Twin City, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Minnesota. And there you have it. 20 albums. Connected. Connected. Uh, I'm going to do another thread response, I think. Uh, but I'm waiting on someone to come through for me on that one. And uh, again, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, thanks for starting this, Dylan. Thanks for all the other responses that uh, have been really good that have made me want to do it. And uh, yeah, take care. All right, bye. Digital gramophone makes no sense.